Um, so I was asked to talk about what I see as, as main trends in emerging technology, which is um, a challenge because I feel like I'm talking to a room full of people who know a lot about <laughs> emerging trends in technology. Uh, I'm definitely not an expert, but on my show Spark, I do get to talk to an amazing number of innovators. Um, and really what I focus on is what I would call technologically driven change. So where social trends meet technological trends. So I'm coming at this from maybe a slightly different angle. Uh, I suspect that the trends that I list are things you're probably going to be familiar with, but I'm hoping to tease out what I think some of the implications are. And so when I was thinking about what I was going to talk about, I found myself remembering a story that we covered on uh, Spark recently that I think is kind of the governing model for the trends I'm going to talk about. It was a story of these two high school chemistry teachers in rural Colorado who came up with this clever idea. Instead of bringing the students together in the classroom for a lecture and then assigning them their homework to do uh, you know, in their bedrooms in the evenings, they decided to flip the model of the classroom and homework on its head. So they made video podcasts of their lectures, which they assigned as homework. Uh, and in the, in the school time, what they used to have as a lecture, that's what they did their homework in with the teacher, and they worked collaboratively with other people. So it's been tremendously effective for them, and uh, the effect was immediate and obvious. And here's a little bit about one, what one of the teachers had to say about it. Normally, it would take us a couple weeks to get to know the students and to, to figure out who is really struggling with the material and who is getting it. But with this model, now instead of me spending so much time in front, I'm now with my students. I, I speak to every single student every single day, and I talk to them. How are you doing? What don't you understand? So they're getting a lot more. Could you hear that? Yeah, okay, <laughs> good. Um, now, although they lived in rural uh, Colorado where high-speed internet was not available everywhere, between downloads to phones and MP3 players, flash drives and DVDs, every one of their students was able to watch the lectures. So there's nothing particularly cutting edge about video podcasts. Why am I telling you this? Um, what I think is that we know a lot about access to the technology. But I think we're only starting to kind of drill down a little bit to see beyond the technology itself, to see what the changing technology means at a deeper cultural level. I mean, so many of our ideas of social organization, the way we educate, the way we work, the way we play, the way we date, are based on the problem of scarcity of access to information. So what happens if that scarcity of access to information no longer exists? Why does it seem natural to us to have a lecture in the classroom and do homework at home? Well, because the structure of a classroom came about during a time when you had to be physically in the same room as the teacher in order to get the information. And so, you know, I think we've become very good at figuring out what the technology can do, but we haven't dug down to say, what are the unquestioned assumptions about how we live and relate to each other that are based on a scarcity of information that doesn't need to exist any longer? I mean, in the Colorado case, we see a whole structure of the way a class is organized turned on its head because two teachers were able to make that kind of conceptual shift. So as I go through some of the main uh, technological trends, there are two questions that you might want to keep in mind. One is, how is a trend a result of a new lack of scarcity of information? And two, is there a conceptual shift in how we organize, learn, or socialize that that technological change opens up? And how can I take advantage of that? Because that's the space where innovation really lives. I mean, there's the one level of innovation of the technological change. The other level is making those conceptual shifts. Uh, so, you know, now like any journalist, I'm a magpie and I have a lot more questions than answers. Most of what I've done here is basically pick up on things that guests of my show, Spark, have uh, pointed out and tried to see where they fit together in bigger patterns. So this idea of the end of scarcity of information, for instance, turns up in a lot of different theories. 